Okay. So already I explained, uh, know about uh, how to handle alerts. That alerts program I'm going to show you. So let me show you alerts program. Here you have a so when you when you come to this page, uh, so you take up this uh, this website. So you can see here JavaScript alerts. You need to click on this, verify this uh, URL and verify this uh, so heading, and then click on click for JS. And this is the simple alert. You need to switch to this alert dialog. Then you handle this uh, OK button or you want to get this, get it. So then you have to verify this message also. Both you have to do. Then click on JS. This also same. You have to click on JS. One time if you click OK, uh, your result you are getting, you click to OK. And if you click Cancel, you click to Cancel. So like this, it will vary. So click for uh, JS prompt. So you type something here. You click OK, so you, you will get here, you entered selling. Again, click on this. If I click cancel, so you entered null. So this is the test case, we need to do that. So I'm going to write a, this for this one test uh, method and for this another test method, for this another test method. Okay, so this three test methods I'll write. But do we need a, so each test method, any repeatable code is here? Nothing, right? So then I don't need a before each and after each. I'll just write one time only. Uh, just I'll uh, copy this code and I'll reuse the as much as. Or you want me to create a new code, uh, but I'll copy before class and uh, before all and after all because we were not going to change anything there. So it's up to you. If you want me to create, I'll create a new generate test case. So I just need, so before all or after all, that's enough. So I'm going to change this uh, alert test. JavaScript alert test. Okay, so then I'll just copy the beginning parts. I don't want to revise this. This code is common. So I'll just copy paste so that we can save the time. Okay, but here the URL you change it. So the URL is different, right? So what is the URL? You go it and copy this URL. That's it. And then, right. so you have to <clears throat> click on the, maybe if you want, you can validate this pay heading. So I can validate this heading also. So relative X path, if you want, you can get it. So you had a text heading, you can get automatically directly, you get the heading also. So whatever you want, you can take it. So copy from here. So I'll do that. Just paste title if you want the internet. I think this is the internet only, right? That's a, the internet. Just write internet. So they here also you change it. So you can validate that uh, title also. Right, you can validate that title also. So heading. heading, heading also you can validate. So wait dot until expected a conditions. Dot, then solve. 
element located. Element. Element located. So by dot x bar. Just give that x bar. Do you want to write a asset uh, equals all those things? It's up to you. You continue that. Then you write. Uh, I, I want to write this code, right? So before all, uh, I want to write. After all. So this code, I also will finish it. Okay, done. So I need to navigate to this page, right? Uh, the JavaScript alerts. So just click on this JavaScript alerts. This is the link. Yeah. Oh, you can see here. Uh, so we can get a href with href also you can write. Yeah. What's a, whatever you want, you can take it, not a problem. I'll take it. So click on. JavaScript alerts. Yeah, Alerts link. So driver dot byte element byte dot click. So if you click, what will happen? It will go to next phase. Immediately you have to put a wait wait statement. So wait for the next phase URL. So wait dot until expected conditions, conditions dot dot visible contains URL. URL to be right, okay. not contains URL. URL contains. Ah, URL contains. So URL contains. You just give URL. So what URL it is? Where is that? This one. So I will just give partial. I don't want to give complete also. Next. Because title is same, they're keeping title same. So uh, that's why I'm going for the verification of uh, address bar you have. So partial URL. Then I can go for this uh, heading also. Okay. Wait for the. Do so, we need to know address. do all these three uh, verification? Anyone, anyone, anyone is, is enough. Anyone is enough. Anyone okay. is enough. Not necessary. All okay. okay. One is enough. One verification you have to keep it, so that it will be stronger. So, okay. Right. So you don't need to struggle. So even you can use whatever you want. See. That's the copy and paste it here. You want to verify assertions? You just add assertions. First, you need to get the text right. So string header text. text. Driver dot. Find by yeah, dot yeah. x path. So you give that x path. That text. So same, mostly will use click, send keys, these wait commands. So these are the flow that generally you will get these things only in the web pages. So and then assertions in the middle, you add assertions dot assert equals. Okay. So this is the your actual low. And expected you copy from there, okay? So what you are expecting? That's it. No. So this is the till this point you reach right now, the test case will start now. 
So one by one test case. Well, first one, I'll write a first test case. Test simple alert. So test is simple alert. What is a simple alert? First one. Yeah. Um, simple alert. Test is started. So first you have to click on the. So what do you need to click? Click on click for yes. JS link. Yeah. So click for JS alert link. And anything you can take, it's up to you. Okay. Click for JS. JS click on. Okay. So driver okay. dot find element okay. by dot xpath. Write the xpath. Dot click. click. Next. So once you click on this, you are getting a alert, right? Immediately switch to alert. How can we switch to alert? Alert alt equal to switch to method dot switch to method dot alert. So now get the text of uh, that alert. So simple alert text is alt dot get text. Next. Uh, so handle the, so click OK button. Okay. Click alert OK button. So alt dot. Hmm. What is the method you need to call? Accept. Accept method. That's it. That's the one simple method. Ramesh is driving, switching to alert uh, common for all the actions. Yes. Common. yes. Okay. Common for all. Okay. So test confirmation, confirm alert. Okay. Next test method. So confirmation signal after test is started. So click for okay. JS confirm. So take the X path for this. Or a CSS select will take. Let's take a CSS select. Okay. okay, you clicked it. So then you got the same. So I'll but just change here. Stay enough. So confirm. Our after text is. So you give this uh, reference variable and you mm -hmm. click on OK one. Okay. But here we are we are getting every time this uh, result, right? You have to validate mm -hmm. this result. So write a method for this, okay? Write a method for this. So write a method ID alert. So ID result is there. You write a method and uh, so it should be a green, okay? It should be a green and you can write it. So you can write a uh, simple method. What is the method? Private. So wide verify alert response. Okay? So this is a simple method you create. So and you write the, so you wait for that. Well, first you wait for that, wait but until Expected conditions. So 
presence of or visibility of visibility, okay. visibility of visibility of element located so by dot id we wait for the visibility of that id that result result then so you might you might give this uh, if you want this uh, text so because every time it is changing right string response response text so you have to give that assert yes. dot assert equals but i need sorry assertion not assert assertion dot assert equals but i need to get this uh, this message as a text see that this is the one you, you can get it that x path you can use it so string result output equal to uh, output is enough right result uh, to or not output equal to driver dot find element by dot x path hmm. what is the second one second parameter um, that simple you call this and give here mm -hmm. what you are expecting here that you give this based on the scenario it will change right that's why I put a parameter so you have successfully done that's the message Next here also call the verify. So what is uh, you will get here? Just check that. Click OK. What you are getting? You click, click, click. click this. This is what you are expecting. Again, I need to click one more time. I need to repeat this, right? Why I need to repeat one more time? I need to click on that because first time it is closing. Second time I want to validate the, this cancel. Okay. To cancel that, I need to click mm -hmm. one more time. Then I need to open this and I need to switch to here. Then click on cancel. That I'm doing here. So here I just see enough one, but this is not required every time. So click on alert. Yeah. Cancel, cancel button. button. So, what is the cancel button for clicking cancel button? What is the method? Dismiss. Hmm? Dismiss. Dismiss method we have to use. You have to remember simple methods and you should not forget these things. Sir. Very, very simple methods. Sir. And I don't know why you are forgetting them. Very simple. For OK, accept. Yeah, accept. Cancel. For cancel, uh, dismiss. That's it. Uh, then there is no, I don't know. So, ragged signs also to remember that. Generic, uh, you are accepting the alert, you are canceling the alert, you are dismissing the alert. Test uh, prompt alert. Prompt alert. So, Let's go on. Click for JS button. Prompt button. So let's find out what is this. This also, I think, child three you will get here. That's it. Child three. Let's right click. Right? Exactly. No. So I clicked on it, then I switch to the alert, but I'll put change this. Uh, 
this one. But I'm going to, uh, before clicking OK, I'm going to type it. Type the value in edit box. So here I'm pt dot send keys. So web driver. Then I am going to click this PRMPT yeah, dot accept. First, I am accepting. So, when you accept, click OK. This is the one you are getting. So, copy this and give this verification. You should get this. So next you're clicking one more time. Duellen child of three. That's it. Remaining all same. Then now, uh, so this is a theorem PT one. So theorem PT one. Before dismiss, I'll type it one more time. Okay. Type the value in prompt edit box. PRMPT one dot send keys. I'll just type some. But when you're dismissing, the value is going to be different. Nice. Mm -hmm. so what you got? Null you got it. So that null you copy it. So this null you need to copy it. So this is the three test cases, control A, control shift format. Done. So all are done. Very, very fast, but you keep some thread dots leave so that you can observe that. See that <laughs> fraction of seconds it will finish. We cannot observe that. If you want to make some observation, so just keep some. See, all three are passed. See, first one point two one one second, second one point three five five, third one point three one zero one. Okay. Yeah. So, any questions? No, sir. We are good. Okay, let me cover one more. Uh, maybe Monday onwards we'll start test ng. But I want to start now itself. Uh, but one more scenario I'll cover, then we'll know. Uh, if time is there, we can. So frames I want to cover. Frames. Nested frames. So I want to get this text. How can I get this text? So let me use the reusable methods also or there are you can directly call the switch to methods so we have already reusable methods if you want you can go and uh, use them so how to handle uh, uh, frames there is a how to handle frames concept is there if you go to blog archive this and how to handle frames mm. Alerts frames. Here is the code I have given, complete uh, reusable methods I have created here. So you can just you know copy paste and you reuse these methods. This is this is also you can tell as a overloaded methods. Okay, everything is written here. You can call that. Let, let's go and do that quickly. This same I'll re-copy and paste it. Most of the code you can reuse, right? That's why I'm just uh, frame test. So let's go here and uh, do that. Similar, this is all same, but only here, uh, this will change, right? This will change. Uh, instead of JavaScript alerts, what you're going to click? Frames. 
So click on frames link. So frames link. So I'll use a link text, okay? Let me use a link text. So it is going to the, when you click on this, it is going to the next page. So just give this title, uh, URL, and then uh, this heading. So what is the, this one, just copy this. Copy it from here and reuse that. I'm getting, so here, what is the heading? Frames, right? This is the frames, or oh, this is the frames. From frames, I need to navigate to uh, where? So next I need to click on nested frames link. Nested frames link. So driver dot find element so by dot x path. So the x path is link text. Let me use partial link text. Okay. We didn't use partial link text right till now. So I, I covered almost all of them. So anything pending, let me know. So if you have a doubt on any locator, so I'll try to use that. Consuming, so the methods and concepts, you can remember so easily. Otherwise, if you're not using, you won't remember them. So even if it is not necessary also, if there is a possibility, call that. So that one more time, you're uh, recollecting that. Okay, so that's it. It will go to next. So I'll wait for this nested frames, this URL. So I'll go to test method, one of the, so I can say nested frames. So you need to wait, right? You need to wait. Um, I'm not going to click anything here. So wait for for the nested frames URL. So wait dot until expected conditions dot hmm. conditions dot which one you are waiting for the URL URL contains okay so what is the next step so I want to fetch first number of frames in this space okay High level. So how, how to fetch number of frames in the page? Fetch number of frames in the nested frame space. How can you fetch number of frames in the page? List of web element. List of web element. All frames equal to driver dot driver find, dot find elements. Frame find list element. equal to yeah driver dot find, find elements. By dot, dot tag, tag name, name of frame. By dot tag name of frame. That's it. Very good. So the tag name we are giving. So you want to 
frame tag frame all frames you will get it here so this is the frame list you got and you can so i'm just removing all these things So number of frames. Frame list dot size. So collection name. Frame list dot size. Next. So what do you want to do? So again, I have to go to this frame. <laughs> This frame is different and this frame is different. So again, this frame is, see, you have a frame set, right? Frame set means entire page is selecting. Expand this frame set. Understand first. See, first frame when you put a cursor, top one is highlighting. When you're putting a cursor on the second frame, bottom one is highlighting. So that means top, first you have to switch to top frame, right? You have to switch to top frame if you want to go to that frame inside again document document inside html again you have frame set so first this frame you switch then you can switch to these frames any one of them so first switch to this top frame okay switch to top frame switch to top frame so can you switch to top frame you want me to use a reusable methods or uh, just directly is a simple one we can write just directly, sir. Director? Okay. Just write it. Driver dot. Switch to method switch dot. To method dot. Frame of. I will use Zero. frame of int index. Okay. Zero I will use. Zero means first. Top frame. First one. Top one. So we have two. Top or bottom. Top one I will represent as a zero. Bottom only will represent as a one. So. Now I need to fetch a number of frames. So once you switch number of nested frames, I can say nested frame list. Is this clear now? Now you move to one of the middle frame. This frame you go. This is the middle frame. He has a name locator. So I will use name locator. Okay. So now, hmm. Can you please switch to left frame after that middle frame? Not like that. This is the independent everything, right? You want to go to which one? First, First left, left frame. Left after frame. Middle frame. Then you can go, right? Switch to, switch to like that. How many, which frame you want to go? From here, you can go again here. No problem. Okay. You switch here, then you go here. Whatever you want. Just writing the command only, right? Uh, driver dot, uh, switch to method dot frame of, you give that frame, left frame uh, name locator. That's it. Not right, sir. Hmm? Nothing, you want sir. Driver dot switch to method dot frame of it is the same command. And that what is the matter here? Middle. Now you get the text of that middle frame. So middle frame has a text. Fetch the middle frame text. So String m text equal to driver dot find elements. So by dot so id, I think id will be there. You can fetch the id. Content will be 
<laughs> so ID is the content. So get the dot guest text. Now you can accept if you want assertions dot assert equals mandatory assert equals what you want to validate there so that you need to tell very clearly so i am expecting middle middle that is there or not you have to tell if you put asset only you will come to know right otherwise you, you are never going to learn that then switch back to normal position How can you switch back to normal version driver dot? Switch to, switch to method dot. Default content. The default content. That's it. So this is the code, simple code. So very, it's not very complicated also. Run this. So that default content, sir, will switch to the left frame or to the Parent top frame? Window. Top. Top frame. Okay. Mm. So did we write? Okay, it is, I think, struggling. Let's see. First one, two. Second one, three. So I think it is struggling. Failed. No such frame. No frame element found by name frame middle. So it is saying uh, I couldn't find it. So here, so directly you, you are not able to switch from left frame to middle. So you go back and then switch back. So that's what you need to do. So you go back from left frame to top. Okay. Then you directly switch back. Because this frame inside, you don't have this one. This is a separate frame again. Okay. This frame inside, if it is there, you can call. But this frame inside, you don't have that. That's why you go back. Again, you switch back. Clear? Clear, sir. Okay. Let's run this. So, the, remember the exception. What is the exception? No, no such frame. No such frame. frame. <laughs> So no frame element found by name or ID, whatever we have given this with this, it's not able to find out. So all these exceptions are important. They will ask what are the different exceptions you have encountered in your automation. So you have to give these answers. Let's run this again. Still struggling. I think I have to call again. Yeah. No such frame or middle frame. Okay. So what you need to do, you have to switch to this. I'll change here to top frame. We'll see that. Okay, it came here already, but uh, so zero is also fine here. This is not a problem. Maybe I'm thinking I have to switch again to this one after this. Because it is going to top frame. That is the reason. Let's run this. Done. Okay, so that's the main process. So this, this what is happening, you switch it to top frame, then one of the left frame. Then you are calling default content means it is going up, previous, top. Then again you switch and to main frame, main frame inside nested frame you switch. Then you do the validations there. Are we good?
same you try this i frames also so here this is the i frame i here if you want to type something here or you get this text or you get or you just whatever you want you can try it out so you get the text or you type it okay so so you you can type also but see that well, you know you, you get it first get this text and try it out but if you want see that this is inside the i frame first you have to switch to i frame then only you can whatever action you want you can do here good please practice please practice this now let's move on to the quickly test engine any questions before jumping on to the test engine I didn't fix this issue. Okay, no problem. So anyhow, so what is a test engine? A test engine is a next generation testing framework, which is used to test the your web applications very easy way. So you can. automate what any kind of test cases unit test cases integration test cases and uh, system test cases end to end test cases all kinds of test cases you can write with the test ng framework so test ng means next generation testing framework which is invented by best cedric best cedric is the person who invented this uh, test ng the inspiration for a test ng is a jnet only from jnet only he created the test ng but what are the advantages and the disadvantages of uh, this jnet and test ng so let me give you the differences between jnet and test ng that's a very important interview question also so jnet and test ng so lot of differences are there so what are the differences is basically uh jnet you have a limited annotations right very limited annotations at the rate b4 all loop at the rate b4 each at the rate uh, test to at the rate uh, after each at the rate after all loop. And at the rate so two, these are the things very very few annotations you have. Whereas test ng has a rich annotation support. Rich annotation support means so many annotations you have, not one. So many annotations you have from suit level to till method level. So that's the power of this uh, test ng. and also so using jnet you cannot prioritize your test cases but with the test ng you can prioritize those test cases you can prioritize those test cases and uh, another concept is using uh, jnet you cannot set the dependency among test methods for example one test method depends on other you cannot set that dependency that concept is not there in jnet but you have that concept in test ng you can group the test cases in jnet using at the rate tag you can group the test cases in uh, test ng using a groups groups keyword you will use and you can disable the test case in jnet using at the rate disabled but in test ng you can disable the particular test method if you don't want to execute you can disable that using at the rate test bracket enabled equal to false you have to write and 
you can do parameterization in testing using at the rate parameters annotation. You can supply the data from XML file in testing, but that feature you don't have in the JBIT. You can do data driven testing using annotation at the rate data provider in testing, but you don't have that annotation in JUnit. So that is the unique features you tell differences. So what is there and what is not there in the JUnit and testing, you have to explain very clearly. Okay, so please uh, read this uh, one more time, listen this video one more time and note down. So somewhere I have given uh, that uh, differences also, but you high level, you note down that, okay. And uh, so test ng, what, what, what the test ng will do? The test ng will give lot of, uh, you know, rich annotation support. You have a nice uh, documentation also. If you go here, go here, test ng documentation, if you type, okay, you will get a nice documentation. See, this is the one, test ng documentation, you will get it here. So if you go introduction, see this is the test ng introduction. You can write what kind of uh, test case, all kinds of test case you can write. And uh, so it has a rich annotation support. So at the rate before suit to suit level to method level, you have all the annotations before suit, after suit, at the rate before test, at the rate after test, at the rate before groups, at the rate after groups, at the rate before class, at the rate after class, at the rate before method, at the rate after method, all this you can use them. See, Till method level you have, and also you have uh, so at the rate data provider, at, so at the rate factory, at the rate listeners, at the rate parameters annotation, at the rate test. So test has so many keywords. You can see so many keywords. You can prioritize. You can invoke a method multiple times. You can run the groups. You can enable. You can write a description. You can set the dependency among groups and methods, data provider, and always run equal to true. All this, so many thread pool size. And all these keywords you can use in test engine. So let's understand. Uh, first, we'll install the test engine. Okay, Let, let's install the test engine. So can you all open your uh, eclipses? Quickly we'll install test engine. In the, anytime if you go and go here in the eclipse, are you all ready? Yes. Go to just a minute. help eclipse marketplace. You go to help. Eclipse Marketplace. Help menu, click on Eclipse Marketplace option, then type here test engine. Just click on search. See, first one only. You can install the this one. So this is uh, how to install a test engine. Simply, easiest way. Click on this. So confirm. Accept the license agreement. Finish it. Sir, can you show on what? So select all trusted ones. So restart the Eclipse, that's it. Very simple one. Go to help. Yes. Go to help menu, Eclipse Marketplace. Four minutes. <laughs>
Okay, sir. So then type here test ng. Test ng. So search it. Then first one only you will get a test ng. Then click on install. Okay. Continue with all the steps. That's it. So then how do you know whether it is installed or not? You can just okay. right click on any package. You can see here test ng option. We have a create a test ng class, convert to test ng. So test ng option is there, that means it is installed successfully. Okay. That's a quick installation. Yeah. Is it done? Sir, one time is, uh, it is enough, right? Uh, for every project, uh, we don't want to go. This is the whole eclipse, eclipse level. Eclipse level means, so sorry. <laughs> Anywhere until unless your eclipse is not changed. And this is the common for all the projects. Entire eclipse is not for one project. It's for a whole eclipse level you are installing the test engine, not for a project. Is it done? Done or no? Done, done. Yes, sir. Done, done. Okay. So let's move on one by one. Let's understand this first. Uh, what is mean by uh, these annotations? One by one annotation we'll understand. So what is mean by thread before suit? So this annotated method will be run before all the tests in the suit have run. Suit means what? A collection of test cases, a collection of test ng classes is called one suit. So that means in those all these classes are running before, first suit before you want to run some code that code you place inside this as that before suit annotated block of method. That's a before suit. Again, here, every method is a non-static method. First annotation you will write a thread before suit. Below you write public void method name, parenthesis, curly bracket, method name, body. Inside you write the logic. So that's the before suit. Okay. Next, after suit. So after suit means the annotated method will be run after all the tests in this suit have run. Like last, uh, for example, before suit you can use for uh, just maybe installing the, deploying the application, installing something, a database connection, something, something. I, before you were all tests, uh, you want to do something. That kind of things you can put in the before suit. So for all the classes, something on the top, you need to do first that thing. You can put that in the before suit. 
So after suit means, okay, after all the test cases are executed over all the suit over, finally, like, uh, uh, so collecting the logs. So closing the browsers. So that kind of things so you can put in the after suit. So suit level. So these two annotations are suit level. Suit before, suit after. Suit before means a before suit to method annotated block you have to use. Suit after means you have to use after suit. It's meaning after suit. After all the suit, you can run this. That's the after suit means. So at the rate before test, at the rate before test means, so before understanding this before test, after test, we should understand the XML file. So this is the XML file or suit file we call this. So suit file or XML file we call this. Testng.xml is the suit file. Testng.xml is the suit file. So it is the document declaration. Then first, what is this? What is this? And what is this? What do you call them? What do you call this? What do you call these things? Suit is a tag name, name, verbose is the attributes. Attributes. We learned already in the HTML, right, madams? So this is the tags, suit tag. Then suit tag inside, you have attributes. Attribute equal to attribute value. Attribute equal to attribute value. This is the open suit tag. But the difference, sir, we learned only there in the HTML uh, input to tag, select a tag, label tag, and IMG tag, A tag, button tag, table, TD, frame tag. But what is this? This is the XML file also. A tags only will be there, but customized tags you can write. You can create your own custom tags using this XML file. Okay. Is this clear? HTML means fixed tags will be there. XML means you can create your own tags. That's the difference between HTML and XML. Are we all good on this? Yes, Anish. Okay. Now, First, your suit file will start with a suit tag. Suit tag below, you have a test tag. Test tag name equal to the, again, test name. You can give a test name. Test tag below, you can write a classes tag. Classes. Classes tag below. You represent one by one class with a class tag. You represent a one by one uh, with a class tag. So classes tag below class tag is there. Class tag end after you have a class tag, classes tag you are closing, then test tag is ending. So this is the one test tag. So test tag inside, what is there? Classes tag is there. Classes tag inside, each class, how you will represent? With a class tag. If you want to one more test, another test tag, you write. One more test. See, this test tag is start tag. This is a, what is this? End tag. End tag. End tag. So this test tag is started. This test tag is ended. So again, this classes tag started here. Classes tag is ending here. Class tag is started here. Class tag is ending here. One more class ending here. So 
each class you will represent with one class tag class tag name equal to you have to write a package name dot your class name you have to write so that's how to write a class name so remember class tag then name attribute equal to package dot class name that's how then only it will recognize directly if you write it, it won't recognize are we good so two test tags why you have written you can ask right the question you didn't get answer for that or you got already but you are not asking you if even if you don't know also hmm? then here why are you given packages you can specify package names instead of class names then suit tag test tag then packages but here test tag after what we have written here classes but i don't want to write if for example my package has so many classes how you will represent it? so that's what we are using packages below package tag and represent that package only so this means this package inside how many classes are all will run that's a simple right so if you in, instead of writing each class so you want to run all classes in that particular package this is the one approach but sir here why you have written two test tags so this is the way you can run on multiple browsers browser compatibility cross browser testing we call this each test tag you can put for one browser another test tag for another browser so multiple test tags you can use for each browser but the okay? test tags will be same right if we are running on multiple browsers sorry can you come again uh, so uh, like we are having two different test tags right so you are telling if two different test tags for two different like different browsers, right? So if if that is the case, like the test tags are same, right? Like it's up to you what test you want to run on that browser. Okay. Hmm? What browser you want to run? And what test case you want to run? What test case you want to run? Each browser, you have to take a decision. like how where comes the uh, you know uh, the priority here uh, you said right like in test mg the test cases they have the priority right uh, that priority will come at the test level at the test method level right so where you are marking at the test okay so there that tests only you have to prioritize which one you want to export which one you don't want to export that prioritization. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that browser compatibility, multiple browsers, if you want to run, then you will use this concept. Suit tag inside, you can add multiple test tags, and each test tag inside, you can include. Even parameters also you can include and classes tag above parameters also you can include. For example, I want to run this test tag on the Chrome browser. I have to include a parameter tag. Maybe I need to supply parameter for my test cases. Run only on Chrome browser. This test you run in the Chrome browser. This test you run on the Edge browser. One more test run on the Firefox. Like that th three test tags you put inside the suit all three test tags will run parallelly. All three browsers will run parallel. You can do parallel execution also. So that I'll show you that, okay? So in the coming classes. Are we good? Uh, here we are using only tags, right? So like where comes the annotation suit? Um... But all in your test in G class, right? Where you have written annotations in the JNIT? 
also in the J unit only. J unit class, right? Yeah, J unit class. So here you will write create a test ng class. Okay. Test ng class inside you have a annotations. Okay. Test ng class inside you have a annotations. So we to run parallel, we use that um, in the suit of parallel equal to none, we'll give that value there, right? Uh, you have to give parallel. Parallel equal to parallel. Parallel equal to parallel, no. Parallel equal to what? Classes yeah. are, tests are, methods are. What you want to run parallel? You need to tell. Okay. There so is after only parallel classes. Are parallel tests or tests with these things test tags? Okay. Test tags classes means classes only will run parallelly on that browser instance. So, if we give a parallel equal to test, then we can we have to specify like two tests at least, right? To run parallel. That's what meaning of parallel means. That's it, right? One. Yeah, we haven't done enough process. Complete, that's right. right. Yeah, yeah, you have to give more, more uh, test tags. You have to give. So I'll show you that. Okay. Okay. So sir. in the coming classes. So that's a parallel execution you can do with the test ng. Parallel classes also you can run. So that's all advantages with this uh, test ng. Okay. J, J unit, we cannot do that. J unit, you don't have that uh, option. So you, even you can do a data-driven testing with uh, data provider annotation that you have in testing. You don't have that annotation itself in the J unit. You can supply data for your method parameters from XML file, this XML file using at the rate parameters annotation. So there is a lot of features are there in this uh, test engine. You will get a nice reports. So you will uh, you'll get a nice logs also. Inbuilt logger is there. Inbuilt report is there. Emailable report is there. Nice reports also you will see after running. So why do, why do you need reports? Hmm? To check the status of the whether it is pass or fail. Mm -hmm. That that you need, right? As if bunch of test cases are there, all you need to see, right? The entire suit run. So that complete all the test cases status, pass or fail or skip the. So what is the status? That status you can easily see with these reports. Okay, that kind of you know provision you have in testage. Are we good? Then let's go and understand. Are, are you so you able to understand the uh, XML structure? Yes. To go to here. To go to to understand the thread before uh, test. So before test code will execute. See, read this. Please understand uh, word by word. The annotated method will be run before any test method belonging to the classes inside the test tag is run. That means test tag inside you have a classes, right? That classes test method execution before this before test annotation block will execute. That means test tag before the before test code will execute. Once before test executed, then cursor will come to these classes, one by one class. Here, how many test cases are there? All will run. Then this test method is over, right? No more classes. It will go here. Then after test will call. After test means 
the annotated method will be run after all the methods belonging to the classes inside the test tag have run. Test tag inside all the classes completion after after test block will execute. After test block will execute. Is clear before test and after test. Then one more test tag is there. Again, cursor will go to before test. Before test will execute. Then it will come inside this uh, test tag and one by one class will execute. After all the classes of this test tag is run, then it will go to after test. So the before test to after test, test tag level. Are you clear? Yes or no? Yes or no also no answer? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That uh, uh, before test will execute. And then like after test, and if, if there is one more test method, then again it will execute before. Not test, test method, madam. Here, not test method. Test method is different. Test tag is different. Test tag, okay. The test tag means you can write many classes. A test tag can contain 10 classes also. A class contain again at the rate test methods multiple again. A test tag can contain 100 classes or 200 classes. A class can contain five methods, so five at the rate test methods. Class two can contain another two test methods. So like that. Class can have multiple methods, right? You can write multiple methods. Methods, I'm not talking methods here. I'm talking test tag level. Yeah, I, I just like, um, sorry, I missed that word, sorry. Yeah. Test tag level. The test tag level annotation is at the rate before test. Before this test tag, the before test annotated block will execute. Then all of them will execute. Then after test block will execute. If one more test tag is there, first cursor will go to edit before test annotated block. That will execute. Then it will come to this one by one class. This class, how many test methods are there? All test methods. This class is over. Next, it will go to this class. How many test methods are there? All will execute. Then after test will execute. So that's a before test to and after test. Are we good? Or still no? Yes, sir. So this is a very important. If you're not uh, telling, I will move on, okay? I have, it's not problem for me. So if you're not uh, asking, is, I... is that possible to write it in the notepad, like um, brief, brief it in the notepad? So you have already here. So even though I have given here, see this, this is the interview question. What is the difference between before test and the before method? Before test is tag level annotation. Before method is at the rate test method level. At the rate test method level. So uh, already I mentioned in the JNIT, right? At the rate before each. Before each is nothing but a before method here. Okay. So at the rate test method before, before method will execute. Then it will come to test method. Then after method. 
If one more test method is there, again, cursor will go to before method, execute that lines of code, next go to a second test method. The test method is over, it will go to after method. So here also now before test, after test doing same, right? Before test means first test tag in, before it will execute, then it will enter into the test tag inside. All will execute classes, then after test will execute. Again, one more test tag is there. First cursor will go to before test, all classes inside the test tag, then after test. So that's the rotation, how it will move on. Next, before groups. So the list of groups that this configuration method will run before. So that means if you have a groups in the test cases in your class, so you grouped the test cases, right? You categorized your test cases. So like smoke, generally in our testing, we'll categorize like smoke test cases, regression test cases, functional test cases, end-to-end -end test cases like that, right? That categorization you will do. So any group before you want to execute, so you will use a, some code you want to execute, then you will use a that before groups generation. The groups after groups executed, for example, smoke group related test case are executed. Then after groups, you want to execute some code, you will put a after groups annotation block. So this is the group level annotation. So setter and clean up things. Then we have a uh, add rate before class. So I explained suit to, I explained test tag, I explained groups. Now we have a add rate before class. So before class means we already discussed this. So I don't want to tell again. This is the class level annotation, particular class level only. Class inside any test method execution before, first before class annotation block will execute. Same we have seen in the JNUT also. The functionality never changes here. So JNUT are test engine. After class means in the particular class, all the test methods are over. Then finally, after class code will execute. And before method I covered already, I don't want to tell again. So this will repeat for every test method before. This after method will repeat every test method after. So that's a before method, after method. And that's all about, um, so these annotations. Please go through these annotations and come back. So next class, I'll explain data provider and uh, at the rate parameters, at the rate test. So these are the three things we will, I'll cover next class. Any questions?